right. Anyway, uh, well, it is. It's good to be in church. It's always good to be in church. We've been looking forward to coming up here. <clears throat> and um, uh, we we're gonna, we were talking about, uh, oh, we we're talking about Brother Walls coming. He, he left Mexico to come up here, and it wasn't as hot in Mexico as it is here. <laughs> <laughs> so, take that. Uh, open your Bibles uh, to uh, James chapter 4, James chapter 4. <clears throat> I'm not preaching out of that, I just want to see if it's in your version. James chapter 4, and um, it just have one verse tonight, <clears throat> that's all I can handle. But I want to really, uh, I want to talk to you, I want to give you a concept if I can. Uh, not an unfamiliar verse, I know, James chapter 4 verse 14 says, <clears throat> Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. Uh, let's bow our heads, let's talk to the Lord. Father, Father, it is good to be saved. God, thank you for saving us. And Lord God, <clears throat> as much as we tell you thank you for saving us, we we don't say this as often, but we really mean it. Thank you for keeping us. Uh, if you did not keep us, God, we couldn't say that we're glad to be saved. Because if, if you could take it away, you would have done it by now. All of us have, have uh, merited losing salvation if we could lose it. So, God, we not only thank you for saving us, we thank you for keeping us. Thank you for putting up with us. Uh, thank you for your, your great love toward us. Now, God, please, there is a message to be delivered tonight. And, uh, God, I don't want to be the reason that these people don't hear from you. God, you know all the things that would prevent your message from being preached. So, Father, I pray that you will just deliver the message, Father. Speak to each heart uh, that is here. And God, uh, win the cause in every life represented. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm sure you know. Now, now you guys, you know, I'm, I'm from the States. Okay, I'm a Yank. I can live with that. hope you can. But, um, um, but our countries are very similar, and I think you probably get some of the same stuff we get. And You ever get one of those uh, phone guys that calls you up uh, and wants to sell you something like this is your one opportunity, or you'll, you know, if you don't buy this now, your life is essentially over, your marriage will come apart, you know, you're going to get terminal acne or something, you know. You ever just get that? You know, you, get to, you ever have a sweeper salesman come to sell you a $200 sweeper for $800, and... Um, uh, and he'll say, this is your one chance to get this for $400. Now, it's $800 sweeper, and if you, if you don't buy it tonight, or if you buy it tonight, this is your one chance. And so, you don't take that one chance. You ever have somebody that said you only have one chance, and then he called you back to let you know you had another one chance? <laughs> I mean, really, I think we've kind of... Uh, We've kind of overused the emphasis of that, you know, uh, uh, in trying to sell something. Let me tell you what one chance is. Uh, I was reading, a, I was reading a story. It's either in the, it's either in the fight on book or, or it is in the second one that I'm doing. But um, uh, I was reading about this uh, this bomber crew. They were, it was right after, shortly after World War II. It was somewhere right around 1945, 46. Uh, and they were, <clears throat> they were, they had a B-24, and they were going to test a new bomb. And so they put this bomb up in this, not atomic bomb, but they put this bomb up in this plane. I, I, I believe for some reason, I think it was over the state of Washington. Uh, and <clears throat> this bomb was so good that when they reached 10,000 feet, it blew up. I mean, just blew up, blew everybody out of the plane, blew the, blew the plane to pieces, just boom, blew the whole thing up, which is not exactly how it's supposed to work. And, and obviously, you know, there were men that were killed instantly, but the pilot, because the plane was just literally uh, blown to pieces, he was far enough forward. He was not killed by the explosion, but he is now free-falling to earth. He is literally falling to his death from 10,000 feet. And he said, as he was falling with rubble of this B-24 coming down all, you know, with him, he said he looked over, and as he's falling right here is a parachute. <laughs> I mean the pack. It is right here. You know he's got one chance. <laughs> now this, you know, my luck, my luck would be I would go like this and watch it go, ooh. 
<laughs> and he said, he said, as he's fallen, and he looks at this parachute, fallen right beside him, and he said he reached over and grabbed one of the straps of it, put it on as best he could, tumbling through the air, through 8,000, 9, 9,000, 8,000, 7,000, uh, 6,000, I can't do that very well, <clears throat> uh, feet, uh, and pulled the ripcord and lived. You say, well, I don't believe it happened. <laughs> How'd he live? <laughs> he sure didn't hit the ground and bounce. <laughs> but here's what, I'm, <clears throat> here's what I'm getting across. That guy had one chance, didn't he? If he would have missed that, there was not a second opportunity. And I want to talk to you tonight about one chance. You have one chance. Listen, I'm excited for you. I really am. Uh, not because you're here and you're alive. There's a lot of people that are alive. But uh, I'm going to talk to you about the one chance you have. First, let me, <clears throat> let me explain a couple things. Because sometimes, really, if we're honest, we are the most important people that we know. We really are. I mean, come on, really, that's true. Uh, you know, you think that any, uh, uh, any option that uh, should be given, it should be given to you because, you know, it's you, right? You, you just think if there's anybody, uh, if there's three or four people to choose from, well, you should be chosen. Why? Because it's, it's you. Who would not choose me, right? That's how we are. We, we've got this idea that we're pretty important. Uh, let me tell you what happened. We flew, uh, we flew up here from Connecticut. Now, this is going to sound weird. My, my, my wife and I, I'm, I'm glad my wife was with me because you know she's not weird. I try to tell you I'm not, and you guys wouldn't believe it anyway. <clears throat> but my wife is not weird. We're in, this, um, we're in Mystic, Connecticut, uh, and there's, there's two things we like doing when we're in Mystic, Connecticut. There's a little, there's a little seafood shop that sells um, uh, clam sandwiches. And Mystic is a very busy little seaport, and right next to the seaport is an old cemetery. And we buy a clam sandwich and walk around the cemetery. <laughs> yep, yep, now we're kind of looking to move in. That's kind of why. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling somebody we put my, my mother-in-law in a nursing home, and, uh, and now, you know, you walk into a nursing home, and you start going, yeah, yeah, something wouldn't be bad. Yeah, okay, we could... Yeah, yeah, maybe that room over there. You know, hope that guy dies before I end up in here. But, <clears throat> but anyway, so, uh, so we didn't get a chance. To play. The, the clam place was closed, but uh, uh, Kathy and I went down, and we're walking around this cemetery. And, and it, I know it sounds crazy, but you go around the back of it, and it's right on the water, and, uh, and we're the only two people, well, we're the only two people talking, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of people there, but none of them really, <clears throat> they weren't paying attention to us. We weren't paying a lot of attention to them. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and I think one of, the, uh, one of the stones, you know, you read a stone, and it said something about, uh, it, and it just said, gone but not forgotten. But they were. They were. You know, I got news for you. You live, you die, they bury you. Your grave will be remembered the life of your children. Because your grandkids are never coming to your grave. You say, well, I want, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you want. If you want to know really how important you are, you need to go to a cemetery where you know someone is buried and get out of your car and walk to their grave. You know what you'll do when you get out of your car and walk to their grave? Unless their, their grave is right here. If you get out of your car and walk to their grave, you will walk past the grave of about a dozen people who were born, lived, and died that you didn't even know existed. That's how important they were. And someday somebody's going to walk past yours just like that, going to somebody else's. Do you understand? So I want you to, I want to get something <clears throat> through your head. I, that's asking a lot, I know. But, but first off, I want you to know that you are not eternal. You are here just for a brief period of time, and you and I have not always existed. You know, uh, this book says God created the heaven and the earth, correct? Well, I got news for you. When God did that, you and I were not around. Okay, you were not around, you were not even a thought. Even your father or your grandfather, your grandparents, your great grandparents, your great great grandparents, they were not around when God spoke this universe into existence. Isn't that right? Because all we are is just so much dust, that's all we are. <clears throat> but you and I were not around when God did that. Uh, I believe this, I believe that Lucifer was, uh, according to uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, I believe he was the anointed cherub that covereth. Uh, I believe that he had, uh, he had a, uh, uh, kind of control over this place, and he messed up big time. And when all of that took place, you and I were not.